In our first reading today, we will hear these words. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon Him? At the start of this Mass, we pause for a few moments. Look back at the past week. Try to remember a time when you felt that God was close to you. If you're having trouble, then ask the Lord for the grace to feel that He is close to you now as we call upon Him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In our second reading today, we will hear these words. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. And in our gospel, Jesus will quote Isaiah and say, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. For the times when we did not do God's word, but only heard it. For the times when we honored God only with our lips, but our hearts were far away from him. Let us pause now, say to the Lord we are sorry, and ask for his pardon and trust in his mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And together we praise the God who is always close to us. Together, glory to, to God, God in the, the highest, highest and on earth, earth peace, peace to people, people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, 
forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is uh, from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations who will hear all of these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. One who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Whoever walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth is in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. One who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. One who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who lends not his money at usury, and accepts no bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be disturbed. One who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. The second reading is from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He will to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Father will to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites. As it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. 
you disregard God's commandment but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come with, from within and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. From our Gospel today, the Pharisees and in fact all Jews do not eat without carefully washing their hands. Now, this isn't just about hygiene, which is very, very important during these pandemic times. No, there's something more going on here. After observing that the disciples of Jesus don't wash their hands, the Pharisees go to Jesus and ask, Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? You can restate that question in this way. Why don't your disciples do what we do? Why are they not like us? Are they not supposed to be Jews, the people of God? To that, Jesus' answer can be restated as, I think you missed the point. It is not hand washing that makes you the people of God. Shouldn't what make you the people of God? Your love for God and your love for the people that He loves. You miss the point of hand washing. And so Jesus tells them, again, we read from our gospel today, you disregard God's commandment but cling to human tradition. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. Yes, there are times when there is a disconnect between human tradition and God's commandments. There is a disjunct, but our best traditions are supposed to put together human tradition and God's commandments. In our human traditions, we should be able to come closer to God. In our gospel today, Jesus says, nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. Yes, there are times when there is a disjunct or a disconnect between what is inside and what is outside, but our best traditions should flow from the inside. And what is outside should help form the inside even more. I usually give homework after I preach during Masses. I do this so that people can continue the reflection we began during the Mass throughout the week. But now, let's level up. Instead of just giving you homework, I'd like to give you a long-term project. A long-term project that seeks to look at our traditions again so that we can find God in them. A long-term project that seeks to put together the outside and the inside. An example of this project that I would like to propose to you. You know, in a few days, it will be September again, and we'll start wishing each other Merry Christmas. And one beautiful Christmas tradition that we Filipino Catholics have is the Simbangabi. But when you start talking about the Simbangabi, people will usually start talking about also completing the nine masses so that they will get what? A wish. 
But is the wish the point of the nine Simbang Gabi Masses? How can we look and re-examine and reinterpret that wish connected to the nine Simbang Gabi Masses in a way that will help us find God? Maybe we can look at it this way. You start Simbang Gabi with a desire. But as you go through the Simbang Gabi, as you really try to prepare yourself for the coming of Jesus, as you try to empty the manger of your heart so that Jesus will come, even though you have a specific desire, a specific wish in mind, you start saying, but you know, Lord, I think the best desire is to desire what you desire. So in the end, my wish is this, that your will be done. And if that is your wish, how can it not be granted? Can we look at the wish that's connected to the nine Simbangabi masses in that way? Here's another example, another beautiful tradition, the angelus. Why are bells rung at 12 noon and at 6 p.m. every day? Parang ang kulit-kulit. And why do you have to stop to say those formula lines? Why? Consider this. Bells are rung. And we are told to stop when we hear the bells. And we are told to say the words of the angels to remind us of very important things. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you stop twice a day and let those words sink in, maybe you will be reminded. Jesus is being conceived at every moment. Jesus is present at every moment. And then you go, be it done unto me according to your word. Let it be done to me according to your word. That will remind you, at every moment, you should also say to the Lord with Mary, Yes, Lord, make me an instrument of your will. And then you say, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And hopefully that will remind us. The Word is among us, dwelling in us. And after you start moving again, after you say the angelus, you start looking for God more. See how beautiful that tradition can be. We need to re-examine our traditions, to see God in them again, especially during this time of the pandemic when so many of our traditions are getting changed. Another important tradition, the tradition of the Mass. Let me ask you this. Does it still make sense for you to attend these online Masses when you cannot receive the body and blood of Christ sacramentally. Is there still a point? Of course, I'd like to say, yes, there still is a point. But you have to figure the point out. What does it mean for you to still go to these masses when you can't receive communion? What does it mean to try to gather your family for these online masses? when you can just so easily you know, turn on your phone, turn on your laptop, and attend these online Masses separately. Is there still a point in coming together in this tradition of going to uh, Mass as a family? The family that prays together stays together. But is there a point in praying together when, yes, you're all in one place, but one of you is just on his or her phone going through it. Is that happening right now? Bato-bato sa langit, ang tamaan, guilty. Now you say, I'll put aside my phone because my parents told me to. 
And yet, when we gather for, to celebrate these online masses, nakasimangot ka the whole time. Kung nakasimangot ka the whole time, is there still a point in gathering and praying as a family? Our traditions are changing. And your long-term project is to look at these traditions. Find the God in them. See how what you do outside will mirror what is inside. And how what you do outside can form your inside even more. Re-examine our traditions. From something as simple as grace before meals... Ask, why do I do this? How can I find God here? Re-examine your traditions. Find God in them. Amen. We now profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven, of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And invisible. I, believe I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only begotten, begotten Son of God, God born of the, the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by, and by the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit was, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our, our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now call upon our Father to cleanse our hearts and minds so that we may render Him sincere worship and be filled with His grace. With humble hearts, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. Hear us, O loving Father. For Francis, our Pope, Honest, our Bishop, priests and deacons, may their way of life be consistent to the sacraments they celebrate, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For the leaders of our nation, may they put an end to the spread of deceit, hatred, blasphemies and killings, and may they promote and protect the dignity of the poor and the marginalized, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For those who find their life burdensome, may they unite their sufferings and pains with Jesus and be comforted by their families and communities, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For all of us gathered, may we truly offer our whole mind and heart to the Lord as part of our true worship, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For our beloved dead, may the Lord show them great care and raise them up to eternal life, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For those celebrating their birthdays, especially Candida Fungo, Vanessa, and Patrick Zamora, Princess Kaitlyn Mejia, Denise Macy Hoven, Gabriel Espedido, Father Candido Lim of the Society of Jesus, Lucia Ramos, Adrian Marin, Venezia Milan Uy, Ivy Vecina Canindot, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For the healing of Raymond Isaac, Bobby Montano, Ramon Felia Jr., Erlinda Lim, Maria Cecilia Kiamson, Bernie C., and Portia C., we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For the repose of the souls of Teddy Montesilio, Rosa Uy, Belia Estrada, Susan Tew, Agrifina Cruz Sevilla, Sabina 
Moses Geld, Virgie C., Mary Chu, Patty Ramirez, and Mother Mary Cecilia de Castro, OCD, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. For the special intentions of Isobel Pareja, Manny and Eden Olivan, Tiu family, Erlinda Cheers, Negrito family, De La Cruz family, Malu Daria Villanueva, Faith Keeper Flower Ladies, and the JVP Batch 11 for their 30th anniversary, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. And for all the intentions you have sent to our Facebook pages at JESCOM and Radio Katipunan, we pray. Hear us, O loving Father. Father, may we worship you with our whole hearts. Hear the pleas of your faithful people as we promise that the graces we shall receive will always be offered for your greater glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ. Our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So many of our most beautiful traditions are things we don't do alone, but we do with others. Why is that? Because doing these traditions are supposed to bind us together. Show us we're not alone. Show us we're a family with one Father. And so now we pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. You may not be able to receive the body and blood of Christ sacramentally, but now I ask you to receive Jesus into your hearts spiritually as you say this act a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall now have the Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray, pray for, for us. us. We have so many wonderful traditions in our Catholic faith. And again, your long-term project. To start looking at our traditions in a way as to re-examine them, in a way as to find God in them, in a way so that as we do them on the outside, our insides are formed as well. I hope you can start tonight. Start with something simple, a simple family tradition. And then just ask yourselves, hey, why do we do this? Where is God in this? Father Jason D's wonderful flower arrangement today, I think captures so much of what I've been trying to share with you today. We have so many beautiful traditions in our Catholic faith, but unexamined, those beautiful traditions are like flowers just put under a plastic container. You must re-examine our traditions to let the flowers come out, to let the beauty come out, to connect again with God. Now, if you ask Father Jason D., I will pr- he will probably tell you, that's one possible interpretation. And just like with our traditions, there are many possible interpretations Find yours. Find God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in His kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. May He nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May He turn your steps towards Himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our celebration has been offered. Let us now go and find God in our traditions. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.
magmahalan Turing niya sa ating lahat Kaibigan niya di utusan Sin 